a lot of you have asked me about um, ENB edits and uh, I thought to do something very basic that uh, helps you understand how ENBs work not uh, in detail about editing these ENBs but at least managing ENBs and uh, manipulating values that you can do uh, quite easily without actually um, knowing uh, how to code them so in this tutorial basically I'll take you through um, how an ENB works and uh, what you can change with an ENB to change the appearance of uh, what you see in GTA 5. So this is my uh, GTA 5 uh, version of NVE um, with a few modifications time cycles that I normally do in order to get a, a better feel of what I want from the game. So. Uh, we'll basically cover this later on on how I do that and all but for this uh, particular tutorial we'll limit it to ENB. So um, whether you use NVE or whether you use QuantV, um, each of these graphics mods comes with an ENB and when you are in game you can access this ENB uh, menu by pressing shift and enter at the same time. So when you press it a similar screen would appear. The options would be different for QuantV and NVE, but um, the working is uh, almost similar. So uh, I'll just try to explain you how this basically works. So this is basically the default ENB that comes uh, with NVE, the medium uh, preset. I'm working on this because most of you uh, would actually be using this uh, by default. So yeah, so these are the values that basically uh, are enabled so a tick means basically uh, an enabled value so use effect is when ENB effect is being used if you untick this then you can see that the effect is gone when you enable this all the effects actually start uh, getting into your game so you have different parameters here in the box you see here that says shader parameters so parameters corresponding to post processing and all would basically appear here which you can uh, basically start editing and uh, make changes to them. So um, ENB post pass effects if you see here uh, it's currently set to sharpen and if you click on this drop down there are a lot of options here uh, which has sharpen plus SMAA uh, which is basically an anti-aliasing color grading you have color grading plus SMA so there are different combinations that you can start using in based on different requirements. So uh, what I basically uh, like is sharpen plus SMAA that I normally use in but you can use based on your requirements. I like this um, and um, it's personal preference if you basically like color grading you can use color grading of NV and start uh, editing these settings here um, or otherwise you can use a combination of color grading sharpen and SMAA based on whatever you like uh, each of this would basically affect your performance um, you can see that for each of these parameters so say sharpening there is a particular amount associated with that on how much it gets sharpened uh, if you want to change it you can actually click on that and you can edit it here itself so I'm trying to make it 80% and uh, this is the sharpening at 80 uh, that I'm trying to apply to it uh, or you can keep it uh, whatever default value you like uh, it to look better you can keep it at that particular value and this is how it would appear okay um, this is AMD uh, CAS um, I think a lot a couple of you uh, also try using this sharpening technique uh, over using reshades as well um, they have tried to uh, enable that uh, through ENB here um, Keep that as default as set, uh, it's good, it doesn't uh, cause a lot of uh, FPS loss for you, so just keep it as it is. Um, there are certain miscellaneous effects being given here and you can edit these values. I normally don't uh, work a lot with these things because I don't uh, work on uh, machinimas on this channel or work with green screens and all, so I don't normally use them. Um, LUT is basically a very good option. Um, I have used this quite extensively when using uh, Quant V. Um, he offers a lot of uh, predefined LUTs as well. Um, so I try to use it with his ENB. I haven't used much with NVENB, but uh, a couple of times. So 
um, for now uh, you can either uh, leave it as it is and just uh, move ahead so nve color grading uh, basically gets enabled when you enable uh, color grading option from here and uh, say i'm going with color grading and smaa and um, i want to use nve official color grading um, there are a couple of presets he has provided for that um, you can check their values within the env uh, files that come with it you see when i change it to one um, the appearance has actually changed right so now it is on zero it's a light uh, creamish sand and when you change it to one it becomes a light reddish sand so a couple of you might actually prefer this uh, appearance whereas the default one so you can use the color grading option uh, being provided for me this looks better um, color grading customizer you can actually customize different settings that you uh, normally do using your reshades you can do it directly around here so um, i normally prefer a lot brighter i change them within time cycles but for you to understand uh you can change the brightness here so i can make it 1.2 you see that it's uh, more brighter here if i don't like it bright i can actually reduce the brightness here by default you can keep it one um if you prefer uh, gamma to be increased you can change the value and you can see that the appearance has become a bit more better i like this look basically um so i use that now uh, saturation is currently by default one and nve um, in my opinion uses the right saturation i like uh, that setting but um, if you would want to tweak it further you can actually increase that you can see that the uh, saturation has increased the colors are more uh, vibrant now so they look a bit more uh, catchy so if you like this kind of an appearance you can change that uh um, you can reduce the saturation further if you don't like that look so you don't have to go through reshades in getting those options you can directly change them here uh, to get the desired uh, look um so yeah i don't want to explain uh, each of these options around here what beach blight plus is and what contrast is you guys know about them um i like this temperature uh, thing here so basically uh, i would sometimes keep it at 500 based on my temperature settings that i uh, basically uh, the color codes that i use within the time cycle for each of these uh, uh, <coughs> attributes like sun weather sky and all i would basically uh, want to keep a different value based on that but for this appearance you can change them so if i uh, want to increase that uh, amount so i can basically increase that make it more bluey or i can make it uh, more uh, yellowish so whatever i look uh, i uh, like i can basically change that from here uh, levels are basically the same as they work for uh, any reshades out there um, you can change the color of shadows and highlights this would change the uh, overall look uh of the image so say for example if i want a bit of more reds in the image and if i change them you can see that the atmosphere has changed a bit red towards the shadow tint so um, this works uh, kind of a color grading for you here so say i change it to 200 you can see that it has become more reddish uh, here so you can find a sweet spot for your shadows and your highlights and uh, you can change them to get that kind of a look uh, similarly you can change the channel mixers around here um, they are pretty good to play with um, quantvi provides much more uh, options for you to change but uh, nv has pretty decent features that you can start using um, now um, you have certain options that might not be enabled by default uh like enb lens which i like a lot it uh, helps create an effect uh in the night uh, that normally uh, that the way nights look like so it uh, helps create that so uh let's say i uh want to take the timeline to say somewhere around in the night 3 o'clock okay and let's pause this time and i'm coming here and uh, i want to enable the lens so you see this lens flares here right so i can go to enb lens here 
and I don't want lens flare, so I will keep it anamorphic. And um, I can basically change the values here. So these are basically the lens uh, intensities and the anamorphic intensity of the lens. So if I want to get an anamorphic lens uh, feeling. Uh, here I can basically change the values. I don't want 4. So let me keep it somewhere around 1. You can see the intensity has decreased. So I get a, a feel that I uh, would normally get during nights uh, in a, a real uh, life. I can change the colors for, and there are different shape options available as well. So if I want to change a shape option of a particular color in a flare, I can do that as well. So um, you can have that effect by enabling your lens. Now say for example, um, everything is sharpened, right? So everything is clear, everything is visible. But in real life, you might not be able to see everything uh, this sharp or clear. So uh, some would prefer their depth of field uh, to be implemented so that their car looks a bit uh, in view whereas the background looks different. So let us go back and change this to somewhere around say 9. Okay. And uh, okay. I'll freeze this and let's come back. <laughs> so now I uh, have implemented depth of field. You can see that this appears more uh, clear whereas this appears a bit blur which is what a depth of field would apply. You can actually go here. I normally use an autofocus which I like uh, during driving. Uh, you can see how blurred it has gone. You can actually reduce that here. So it's 0 0.65 right now. If you make it 0 0.2, you can see that the uh, blur uh, effect has actually reduced. And um, similarly, you can change different settings around here to get the kind of quality that you expect. I like this to be applied a lot during nights and for my day gameplay as well, I like depth of field. It uh, makes the uh, look and feel quite different. And uh, to me, uh, I personally prefer uh, applying depth of field. Uh, but it depends on your personal preference. Um, you can also have uh, this applied based on your mouse focus. So wherever you focus your mouse, you can have that particular thing in uh, focus and uh, accordingly. <clears throat> right. So now um, there are different other options here similar to this that you can enable uh, and then work on them. Um, by default, they ask you to work on these options post pass effects. You have effect panel here. Okay. So coming to effect panel, a lot of you ask me like how to enable raindrops uh, on the screen and how to uh, get the kind of raindrops that I normally uh, get when uh, doing my YouTube videos. So I'll just show you, um, say for example, I'll change the weather to rainy weather, okay? So this is how a rain, uh, rainy weather looks like and you can see that the screen has these bigger drops, right? So whereas if you see Quantv, they have smaller drops. So ideally the drops that would come on your screen are always better so naturally i would say these are how uh, raindrops would appear but a couple of you uh, who would prefer smaller drops like me uh, you have an option uh, here uh, when you go to enb effect panel you see that there are different options that uh, help you so okay so for the guys who want to know how to enable the raindrops this is the option so you see it's disabled when I click it again, it's enabled. Okay, so these are the raindrop enable and disable features on screen. Um, similarly, you can change the size here. So I normally make this 50. Okay, so now you can see that the raindrops are very small. Okay, and a couple of you uh, have asked me like, okay, how to make it constant on the screen. I don't want them to be uh, dropping around. So I just want to feel like it was raining and I have drops around. So for that, you can actually uh, make this zero, the drop speed. Uh, so you see that the drops move uh, with a, oh, sorry, okay. Um, I think fall speed. Yeah. So the fall speed, you see when I have kept them zero, they just stay constant on the screen. Okay. So this is what uh, I try to do. 
uh, I hope this is uh, clear for you to understand. You can uh, simultaneously work on the size, you can work on the uh, color, the edge intensity, sharpness, etc. for your raindrops to get a feel and look of how you like it. Okay, This is what I basically prefer. But uh, you can uh, have it match based on your personal preference. And uh, we'll now check the bloom settings. So let's first go to night so that I can clearly show you how it basically works. So yeah, I'll make it somewhere around. Okay, three. We'll keep it this time. Uh, I'm here and here is ENB bloom dot FX, right? So you see here the blue textures around these lights and you see how uh, the bloom uh, appears everywhere, right? So um, you can basically edit this here. So uh, you can make it as default or you can change it as multiplus bloom. Uh, I think it's almost similar. So multiplus bloom. Um, the intensity normally stays very low, I think somewhere around 1 if I uh, understand. So to look somewhat like this, right? And uh, you can increase the intensity here. So say I made it 3 and now you can see the intensity of the bloom has actually increased everywhere, right? So based on how you uh, like that intensity, you can increase or decrease it uh, to see how everything looks, right? So it depends on what you like. So let's, uh, for now I'll just show you how this actually works. Um, let's get to these things on a later stage. Um, color, you see there is a blue color around. Um, let's work on the uh, last color that is the top color. So this is currently blue as you see. So say let's change it to yellow. So yellow means you will have to change it. And let's make this a zero. So now this is yellow. So you see that the top layer has actually moved out to yellow. Um, you can see this across on lights. You can see it on headlights. And wherever this uh, bloom layer is being applied, you can see that it changes everywhere. Right? Um, when you make everything white, this is how it would look like. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that by changing these values, you can actually change the color of this multipass blue. And uh, okay, that's it. So these are colors correspond to, to different uh, colors around the blue. You can change them accordingly and uh, make them match your uh, desired feel and look. So uh, for now, I'll decrease it. So this is how your bloom would actually look like. Okay. So we have covered that. Let's just get back to our default uh, thing so that everything is quite visible here. And uh, okay, so uh, apart from this effects sections that we have discussed here, there are a couple of effects being uh, available here which you can play across and see how they work. Um, I normally keep ENB effect to ENB series and then I modify values accordingly. But uh, you can also keep it to default or, uh, that is vanilla and you can work based on that as well. So it depends on what you basically like. Now um, this is the light sprites that uh, appear across in the game. You can ma uh, modify them and you can see how uh, lights change based on that. Um, the next thing uh, that I would want to show you is color correction. So um, we already saw brightness and uh, gamma curves around uh, in, in the options, I think somewhere around post pass. So uh, if we change the brightness here, so say 1.25, you can see the brightness has changed, but not like what we have seen uh, there inside. So this is a more uh, better look that I uh, want for certain gameplays and I change it accordingly here. Default values are 1. Uh, gamma curve again is based on how you want that gamma correction to be done. Right? So when you apply different uh, uh, or when you make changes in time cycles or when you make certain changes based on if you use certain shaders and all and you want to 
that gamma curve to match that you can actually do that easily from here rather than going in detail okay uh, when you make these gamma curve changes in quant v your lens would appear uh, very different than what it would look on uh, nv so try to use them and then only you will understand how each of that responds okay um, don't try to play uh, with this weather it's it's entirely different uh, time of the day okay so this is how uh, this works across so this is uh, so when you say a dawn when you say sunrise daytime sunset time dusk duration night time these are the corresponding time um, on which it would affect okay so if i am trying to change my daytime it is in between uh, 13 to 20 so um, whatever i make a change uh, during day would affect during this timeline okay so uh, let's try to shift to that timeline so say i am moving on to 13 so this is 13 here and say i want to uh, make a change uh, here in uh, not here okay great so game volumetric race okay and you see that they are by default one which is an ideal uh, setting for this game to look good but um, based on your need and uh, your uh, taste if you want to change them you already know what your uh, daytime would look like so daytime is around 13 right uh, so when you make that amount day change that is where you will see that change uh, to happen right so based on how your uh, rays uh, appear that change would actually take place here so what I'm trying to say is that you can uh, try changing these values across in sky. You can change them uh, at different levels. For all these uh, times or during day, sunset, sunrise, dawn, etc. And see how that is affecting the game. Right, so it gives you options uh, for clouds, uh, sky intensity, star intensity and all you can try working around with them it also gives you an option for color filters across uh, these uh, time ranges you can also uh, try working with them and see how your game looks um, okay that is related to your uh, light and changes across the day okay uh, day and different time cycles now um, if you go into vehicle this is where you would be able to modify the reflection uh, parameters so uh, you can actually change the reflection amount it is 1.4 by default so just change it to 2 and the metallic amount will actually change um, <coughs> if you uh, have glasses here so you have glass on this vehicle here right uh, if you change the glass reflection amount so let's try to make it 2 you see that it has changed the reflection has changed on these glasses if you see from here okay so based on each of these uh, changes your uh, game would look different now um, the ones who are using quant v uh, might have seen that during nights these uh, headlights would appear uh, a lot uh, uh, what do you say bloomy or you would uh, say they look a, a, a lot different might be that's how the real world appears but uh, you might find it annoying while pay, playing the game so for uh, you guys who uh, want to remove that you can actually try reducing this emitter intensity here and that would actually correct your uh, gameplay so we'll cover that in detail uh, during different sections but in this particular tutorial i just wanted you to introduce uh, to enb and let you know that you can play around this uh, different settings to change the look and feel of uh, how your game looks so um, the different uh, youtubers or different modders around there try to uh, change different settings so that their game looks different than what your game would look when you uh, actually install uh, nv or quant v so try to play around with all these settings and try to improve them okay so that way it would uh, look fine uh, if you have any questions uh, about understanding this do let me know I'm not going into much detail. Um, maybe in the later sessions, uh, we'll try to cover how to edit uh, different ENB files and uh, get the values like how um, 
uh, quant or nv would probably get here i don't know if uh, that is the uh, right topic to even cover because most of you might not uh, want to go into that details but uh, we can do that sometime uh, later on but i hope this tutorial is useful for you guys and uh, hope uh, you would like it and share it with other people who would want to learn about them and uh, if you have any doubts do let me know and yeah i would be happy uh, to clear them and take this forward great thank you cheese